Well, welcome to this legislative candidate interview. I'm Scott Rogers, the Chamber's Vice President, Governmental Affairs here in the Wynn studio at the Chamber offices. And our guest today for this segment is Nate Otto. Uh, Nate is the Democratic candidate for the 68th Assembly District. Nate, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Let me, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how this is going to work and uh, uh, why we're doing this interview. The Chamber doesn't endorse candidates for public office. However, we're very interested in a lot of policy issues. And so for those business people that live in the legislative districts in our area, we're doing these interviews so you can learn a little bit about the background of your candidates and, in their own words, what they think about a few of the business issues. So, Nate, the first question, tell us about you. Um, what's your background and what has led you to run for the State Assembly? All right. My background is not so much in politics. My political career goes all the way back to 2021 when I got appointed to the Eau Claire County Board. And I uh, liked being on the county board, so I ran for office and I won last, uh, last April. I won by 10 votes. There was a recount and it was fascinating seeing that recount process. By trade, I am a software developer. I also do adjunct teaching at CVTC. And um, my family owns a couple of enterprises. My wife employs seven people in her firm, and we also are uh, landlords. So we're, we're connected with the local business community. And this is my first time running for a state level office. So why are you running for the legislature? I often think, what is the best thing I can be doing right now? So I, I don't know if, if you have this, or maybe I'm weird for having this, but I sometimes have conversations with myself 10 years into the future. And I, I say, Nate, from the year 2032, would you regret what I'm doing back in 2022? Would you be proud of it? He sometimes tells me uh, annoying things like eat less cheese curds or, you know, drink seltzer instead of pop. But I also think, what will my kids, what world will they have in 10 years as they enter the workforce? What working environment, what political environment there will be? And I'm seeing a lot of divisiveness a lot of extremes, and with extremism, we lose our flexibility to govern. So the short answer to why I'm running is I am convinced right now that this is the best thing I can be doing with my time at this moment. All right, you're running for an open seat, so mm -hmm. should you be elected and you enter the legislature in January, what would be your personal priorities? What would be the issues that are going to be most important for you to work on? My top priorities are building broadband infrastructure, uh, taking a close, careful look at the energy policy in our state. Also, protecting our water rights. I know in the 68th Assembly District, the uh, district map follows the Eau Claire River watershed quite closely, and this is one of our, our best natural resources, and national eyes are on it right now. I also support uh, restoring women's reproductive rights. I know it's a hot-button issue. I think the best way we can handle this is to keep the heavy hand of government out of it. It should be the relationship between the woman and her doctor and her family. And um, we need to restore women's reproductive rights. So those are my, my main issues. All right. So one of the reasons that the chamber gets involved is that the policies at various levels of government affect business and the economy. Mm -hmm. And so we look at some of the issues that are important to business people. Mm -hmm. One of those right now is the workforce shortage. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts about that? What might be the role of state government uh, in working with businesses on that? Well, I think Wisconsin is challenged in that we've got, our state is nudged between two major economic centers, the Twin Cities and Chicago. And how do we find a role for ourselves becoming our own significant economic center. And I believe in self-investment. Let's create an environment that enables businesses to grow. Let's invest in our internet infrastructure. Let's invest in our education. Let's produce uh, workers. You know, we, we fund education today, so we have a, a productive workforce tomorrow. And even healthcare plays a role in that. Like, healthy people are productive, contributing people to society in general. And you know, any investment we put into healthcare, education, and infrastructure is an investment in ourselves that pays back in the long run. So a couple of the workforce issues we're also mm -hmm. having right now that get pretty specific are child care yes. uh, and also uh, having housing. We have a housing shortage as well as a workforce shortage. So are you, do you have any ideas for what state government could do in those areas? Well, the challenge with a lot of those is the economy is moving so fast in many directions. I believe inflation is twice what it was just two or three months ago. 
and we don't know if it's going to continue to increase or continue to decrease. The role of government is to find stability and predictability. I mean, that's the first thing we can do as a government. Um, find what measures help offset the, the ups and downs in different markets. With housing, a lot of that can come down to the local level. A lot of that can come down to local decisions. I'm currently on the county board in Eau Claire, and we have a lot of zoning issues. Um, the state can have a role in encouraging uh, mixed-use development, um, more strategic zoning planning, more cross-cooperation cross between local entities. So that's one thing that I think can stabilize the housing market. Um, as far as the workforce goes, I know certainly we have issues may, uh, filling roles in uh, the public sector as well. Like it's hard to find teachers, it's hard to find even police officers these days. Um, we can be more creative in our approaches. The 40 hour work week is um, the structure of eight to five Monday through Friday. I think we can rethink that. I think the state legislature can come up with creative solutions that make that very specific, very 20th century outlook or habit um, less common. Like maybe more people will apply if they know their hours can be a little bit different. So creative solutions like that might be an option. And these don't necessarily mean throwing money at the problem. It's just a matter of thinking outside the box as legislators, as leaders, listening to the, to the constituents and looking for these creative solutions. So one of the issues for our community uh, in terms of investment is the UW-Eau Claire's mm -hmm. proposed science and health sciences building. Uh, two budgets ago, the first phase of funding was approved, uh, but then uh, the regions didn't include it last time, didn't get it through the legislature, and so now, fortunately, the Board of Regents has requested the rest of the funding to move forward with the building in their uh, budget request to the state this year. What are your thoughts about the importance of that building, the partnership with Mayo, and if you were the legislature, what would you be your approach to dealing with it as we go into the legislative session? Well, I think one of our best assets as a state is the UW system. And um, with the need for so many STEM-related uh, workers uh, in the sciences, we, we need to go full on ahead with that. Um, pro Public-private partnership works really well at uh, CVTC, where I adjunct teach at uh, Chippewa Valley Technical College. And I know it's also working well in some programs in the UW system. Um, so I'm all in favor of maintaining the Mayo UW-Eau Claire relationship. I mean, they know this is the source for their next employees. Um, and I'm all in favor of doing what we can to improve our STEM programs at all levels, at UW-Eau Claire, at CVTC, at the K-12 level. Um, it's another issue, too, with keeping job creators in our region. Back in 2003, when I first left Eau Claire before coming back, the brain drain was a major issue. It remains to be a major issue. And um, some of the economic powerhouses in the Chippewa Valley, like Justin Vernon, I mean, they're UW-Eau Claire grads. They have fond memories of this town, and they come back. So I, I think supporting the university is fiscally responsible, supporting STEM programs is fiscally responsible, and let's look for those public-private partnerships. All right, so one more question. Yes. Um, the reason I, I mentioned that we do this is for those business people who live in your district mm -hmm. to see a little bit about you, make their decision about voting. Why should a business person who lives in the 68th Assembly District send Nate Otto to Madison next year? Right. Well, part of the reason is my family is business people. Uh, my wife employs seven employees. Uh, we, we own property. We collect passive income. We invest. We take risks. And uh, we are linked with the business community in this area. I also, uh, you know, I care like everybody does. I care about the future of our state. And I see many opportunities um, as both an educator and a business person for what we can do about the future, what we could do about the $5 billion surplus, uh, what we can do to keep Wisconsin a, an active, viable place to, to work, to live, and to raise children. All right. Well, Nate, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you very All right. much. Appreciate it. And we'll just remind everybody, uh, the election's coming up on November 8th, so be sure to do your research, carefully consider your vote, and be sure to go to the polls. Have a great day.